Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a Hi, it's Jackie Cation, and you are listening to The Dork Forest. The website's JackieCation.com, DorkForest.com, TheDorkForest.com if you like a determiner. Let's do the credits. Patrick Brady's going to fix this audio and video. Vilmos works on JackieCation.com, and Mike Rickberg uh, sang the song with his wife, Sarah. He composed it, and he will sing his version of the Mexican hat dance at the end of this show. Thank you so much for listening to The Dork Forest. Here's a scoop. I'm doing stand-up online. A lot of Zoom shows will eventually go back on the road. Sign up for my email list. It's easy to get off. It's harder to get on than it is to get off. And no harm, no foul, if ever bored. JackieCation.com. Sign up for the email list. You'll find out about my weekly Zoom shows and stand-up on the road eventually. You may donate to the show if you would like. I would like. Sure, I would. There's PayPal, Jackie at JackieCation.com, and there is a PayPal button on both DorkForest.com and JackieCation.com, and there's Venmo, if you like Venmo, Jackie-Cation, oddly enough. If you have listened to all of the shows, go to DorkForest.Bandcamp.com, I think. The Dork Forest has a Bandcamp page. You can listen to a, but a lot of ones that are free from pre 2000 nine when i started pre-recording and uh then there's a live episodes that cost me a couple of bucks so i charge you a couple of bucks there's also some stand-up there's a story uh album that's very exciting there and um other than that i have a lot of merch in my garage feel free to order if you know anybody who doesn't have any cds or the dvd and uh you can follow me everywhere at jackie cation let's get into the show Hey, it's Jackie Cation. I am in my living... No, I'm not. I'm in my garage. I can continue to say it, but I'm in my garage. And I am with... Is it uh, Cher? Is it Shlomo Cher? Shlomo Cher. Shlomo Cher. I am with Shlomo Cher, who has a podcast with uh, my loved one, Andy Ashcraft. Uh, So hell has frozen over, and everyone has podcasts now. But Shlomo, you and Andy have a podcast, and it's uh, at Video Game... It's at ethics and video. It's ethics and video games is the name of the podcast, right? Right. And it's at video game ethics on Twitter and Instagram, and yep. uh, it's ethics and video games podcast on Facebook. So ethics yep. and video games dot com will have links to all of that stuff. And your name is Shlomo Share, and your co host is Andy Ashcraft, and you guys talk about ethics and video games, correct? Absolutely. And it's not what we're going to be talking about today. It is not. You uh, right. <laughs> you are on the Dork Forest and you have uh, a fun dorkdom that I have not had on the on the show before, which is sandcastles, which what on earth are you good at them? Um, you know, I'm not bad. I, I feel like uh, so I kind of came in this through my wife's family. OK, you know. Um, and I've been apprenticing, though my apprenticeship <laughs> is my apprenticeship is over at this point. I've, I've been told. Uh, I've, I've graduated. You're a journeyman. Uh, sure, that sounds. I've always wanted to be a journeyman. There you go. It's, Damn good title. So, how long have you been making sandcastles? Okay, I think at this point. So, I I, I came into it, and uh, yeah, I think the first time uh, we went to New Jersey together. My my wife is from Chicago. And uh, sometimes they would go do family vacations at the Jersey Shore to meet other family members. And the first time I, I, I came as, a, as the guest, as the boyfriend. Sure. Right? Sure. Uh, I came in and the family's about to go to the beach. And, um, you know, the, her, her dad started playing slowly on the guitar. And one by one, everybody kind of joins in as they're playing. Uh, I, I forgot, like it was some uh, Rolling Stone song. And what? I was like, they're the greatest yeah. hippie family in the world. They are total hippies. That her parents is awesome. are total, total hippies. Right? And I was like, oh my God, this family's awesome. And then they go to the beach and build a sandcastle together. Together. And Together. How many and generations? I, How many people are involved in this thing initially, if I may ask? Well, in this case, it was uh, my uh, 
the the father, uh, the you know the wife uh, and um, my my wife and her uh, brother, okay. and and a couple of cousins and an aunt. I think we're all participating. And yourself, so and, that's like nine people. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, that that sounds that sounds about right. Um, and I I mean before this, sandcastles were I mean that was a silly thing that kids did. Poorly, right, right? they did them poorly. Yes. Poorly. Mm-hmm. Right. Because because you can't do much the way that kids do it, and you know we never teach our kids in life saving sandcastle skills <laughs> or any sandcastle skills, right? <laughs> Uh, you know, you know when kids go and do sandcastle, it's pretty. You know, you've got your molds; they're pretty straightforward. Some people can do some pretty nice things with those molds, mm-hmm. and you can dig holes and tunnels. I mean, that's what kids do, right. right? And every once in a while, I would go and I would see someone on the beach, and I live in LA, so you know we have a beach, um, and I would be like, "Wow, that's a really cool castle. It'll be a castle or a sculpture, and I'll I'll, I'll talk about that later." Sure. Right? Uh, but I've never actually been with anybody that knew how to do anything. And I, I remember going with them and being just wowed by the kind of stuff that, uh, my father-in-law was doing. What kind um, of molds did they have? Cause I just know cups. Right. I just, everybody has a plastic right. cup and then that might be, and you might have a square. You might have a round oh. and a square. Right. Or you might have something that looks a little more like, uh, the, tower in a castle, you know, as part of the mold, right? You get a bunch of those for kids. Right? Or just sort of round and square is the only ones I know. Is there pointier ones that I don't know about? Uh, pointy ones would be really hard to do, but I think ones that have like kind of the the wall of the castle built into them or, you know, the top. I forgot what those – I, I think those are called uh, – not crena- crenations uh, – uh, turrets, maybe. Oh, th- or so, like so that. there's the straight wall, and then there's the round thing with the pointy thing on top, which, uh, or, or they have like a cat, like a like a like a castle in um, in chess, where they have uh-huh. where they have the little slits cut out. Exactly. Okay. Like the little slits, turrets, and that's I, hard. Yeah. Right? That's really hard to do those little slits. Uh huh. Right. Uh, but they have some where the, you kids have a mold that that lets you do that. Okay. Right? But those molds never really stick well. So anyway, I, I saw – I mean my, my father-in-law is like – he's a professor of like English and visual culture and art. OK. And, and he knows about like architecture. OK. So he would, he would build the sandcastle and talk about the different architectural parts of it, right? And this is a buttress and this is a flying buttress and, and, and I thought – What are the different parts of it? What? There's – yeah, okay. There's different parts, right? So uh, I, you know, um, I went when I went to their house in Chicago. I I saw that, uh, you know, their entire house is full of pictures of the family building sandcastles, and like you know, from all over the world, right? Because they 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 travel a lot, and apparently, um, you know, this uh, from what I understand started with. Uh, when he was a kid in Anaheim, uh, California, his mother uh, made sandcastles and taught him how to make sandcastles. And he taught his kids. And uh, though it sounds like my wife, for the most part, um, didn't want to be – didn't want to do what daddy wanted and built a sandcastle <laughs> all the time. Right. Wow. That's a hell of a rebellion. All right. Right. Um, but at this point, it's – we're four generations in. Sure. In this family sure. with, uh, with my son. Um, and that was part of the fun. Like, you know, we'd go to the beach. My son, when we first started doing this, I think my son participated for the first time maybe when he was two or three. Okay. Um, and there's little things that kids could do. And What can a, what can a two or three-year-old kid do besides break it? Very, very few things okay. uh, at that age. Are, right? Now, does so, your father-in-law sort of delegate? Does he like assign? Like, like is he the construction, mm-hmm. like the, like the what, whatever the construction, were the head construction worker? Is he like that guy? Um, the way we do it now is kind of uh, we go in it together, and I could, and I, and I was gonna, I'm gonna talk about all the how you do it and how it all goes. But I think like at this point, we recently took a family vacation to San Diego. So they flew down from Chicago. We drove down from L.A. And we had a, a couple of other people. And let's say the seven of us, 
we spent pretty much every day in San Diego just on – we got a place on the beach and just spent all day at the beach building a sandcastle. Okay. That, that was our vacation. We, right. We, you know, right? Yeah, that's a dorkdom. Um, that's your dorking out, hardcore. You're like seven that, people definitely. have traveled around the country to a specific – yeah. 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 And uh, the way we do it now is, you know, I – I do mine and he does his and we're connecting them together. Oh, okay. So, so we're, we're kind of partners at it at this point. Okay. So you know. you, it's parallel play to some extent where yeah. – and, and then you bring them together. And okay. Right, right. So, you know, like uh, we'll build two big, uh, two big uh, let's say, uh, piles. I don't know what to call them at this point uh, that we're going to work on that, that are going to be connected. And we know that other things are going to happen as we're all kind of working this together. And somebody, someone else, another member of the family might add something on the side or something in front. And it'll all kind of come together. There's no – I think my stepfather is really has a Zen experience while he's doing it. Sure. And I'm and I'm stoned and listening to the Grateful Dead uh, <laughs> most of the time, for you know for hours at a time while I'm doing it. And some things are happening off to the side. We're in the zone. Right, right. So are you digging a hole? Uh, no. So well, okay. So let me start. I guess about how you do it. Yeah. Where you do it? What? Right. Yeah, I don't know. So, because you would think how it would be a simple. How big they are? I don't know how how big they get. I don't know how many different rooms are they hollowed? Are they? Is it just solid? Talk to me. All right. So let's so let's see. The one we built in San Diego, we had a, a we had a lot of time to do it. So usually it's how long depends on how long we get to do it, and how long we get to do it typically depends on how long my wife can stand being at the beach <laughs> before you know before I get pulled away. Right. Um, but the last one we did, I think the whole compound was probably uh, the highest point was probably three feet tall, maybe four feet tall, depending on how much you, you know, because you can go down further. You can't. It's once you kind of get levels, you can keep going down levels, and then uh, by getting rid of more of the beach, so you can have like these multi-level structures, maybe like three to four feet okay. uh, high. Uh, and probably maybe a, a radius of about uh, eight feet. So it's like a big structure. Right, right. Right. And that was just one of them, or was that the two that were joined? Th- those were several that were joined. Okay. Right. So, so you have essentially different buildings that might have bridges between them, and there might be a, a courtyard, uh, a pool, a moat. This one incorporated a sculpture that my son did. Okay. Uh, involving seaweed uh, that was a part of it and a garden and so a, a bunch of different things could could be happening right right and it's a complex yeah it's a complex right um, and people do things differently okay so let, so let me start at the beginning okay? because uh, you would think you could just go to a beach and build a sandcastle yeah B- but it is not that well you can but here's the problem uh, you go to the beach and you start building a sandcastle, and an hour later, the high tide washes away your sandcastle. So you got to plan. You have to plan you get, where you're putting this thing, much gotta, like when you build anything in real life. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. You you need your geological survey. Sure. Right? Yeah. You need you need an understanding of the weather, right? If you're building a skyscraper someplace where it's really windy, right? You're going to have to figure that wind into how you're doing. And, you know, the beach has its own issues, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. starting with the tide, which is right, which is huge because so ideally, so timing really matters. And ideally, you want to go to the beach uh, right at the end of high tide. Okay. so so the sand is wet. Okay. And the water is receding. So you have a long time, probably like a good 10 hours before it comes back. Okay. Okay. if you start right where the sand is wet and the sand being wet is super, super helpful. Yeah. Because right? it packs better, I suppose. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, water makes things yeah. stick. Yeah. Right. Right. And then you get the type of sand. Okay. So some beaches. So when we went to, let's say, to San Diego, we went to Mission Beach in San Diego, which is an interesting kind of stretch of land between a bay and the beach. At the bay, it was impossible to build a sandcastle because the, the grains were like – Really big and um, oh, re- really big and really um, uh, 
crystally. I, okay. I don't know. There, there's, there's just like, hard, hard to pack them. Just too it's, hard to it's pack hard them. To, or? It's not the, even packing. It's uh, think of it as clay. This is kind so of you, similar to consistency. Clay. You need a, you need a certain kind of consistency. Okay. And like a lot of balls will break apart, mm-hmm. right? If you have like all these kind of big crystals, it'll just break apart. You can't really do much with it. So you want like really like fine sand, right? With right with platelets instead of crystals. Okay. I honestly don't really know what that means, but, but I know when I see it. Your father-in-law told you that. <laughs> he, he told me that. Right? He told me that a long time ago, and th- and you see the difference with the fine sand. Okay. It just it's. It's really amazing, and a certain mixture of clay really helps. But I don't really know how to tell when you have clay in it or not. Right. right? I just I just know sometimes you can carve it, and it just feels like you're carving butter. And sometimes you carve it, and everything falls apart. Right, right. So you're carving it. It's a sculpture. Okay. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, you're so, you're creating a sculpture. So are you digging it? So you you find the sand, you find the right wetness. Do you mm-hmm. dig down or do you build up? First, you got to build up, then you got to carve it down. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, so, but even before that, okay. So there's one more about kind of the the when and where, right? Uh, the weather too matters because when it's hot, uh, because water keeps everything going. So when it's hot, uh, it essentially dries up really quickly. Okay. Fair enough. So the best weather is like six in the in the sixties. Wow. So who you wants know. to hang out at the beach in the 60s for 10 hours? You do. And then I do. <laughs> some <laughs> other people, not as much. Uh, OK. Right. right. There's always everybody. There's always the people in the wetsuits. Right. Right. Sure. Right. 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 But like 60s is, is still comfortable, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, especially and and, you know, I'm working, I'm sweating. Right. 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 You're, you know. Yeah. You're moving. Right. You're constantly moving. Right. Um. And so, you know, a little bit of cold, right, helps the water stay wet longer, right, makes it easier to do it. Mm-hmm. There's one place that's supposed to be the holy grail of sandcastling. Where's that? Um, Texas, uh, South Padre Island. What? Is, uh, it's near the Mexico border. At some point, uh, we're planning a, a family a trip there. destination sandcastle. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Yes. And this is apparently a destination. There's there's people on YouTube who mm-hmm. uh, uh, who are expert sandcastlers who go essentially give classes in San Padre Island, and people go there for sandcastle lessons. And when you watch those videos on Facebook, it's just amazing the things they can make balls out of sand, like big balls, like a volleyball size ball of sand that is perfectly round. Wow. Um. In with a mold, obviously, and then they just sort of keep it correct. Um, I'm trying to remember how they do it. It's it's actually I don't know if it's it's a partial mold. I think you do it partly with your hand. Okay, mostly where you're kind of you know. Uh, I think maybe again in the same way that you might make a ball with clay. Okay. All right. You yeah. kind of how to shape it as a ball, and you can refine it. And they have they have tools for that because there's. You know, there's tools you can buy. I bet this sounds like this is definitely if there's a YouTube channel that's telling you how to make sandcastles, <laughs> there's definitely selling some somebody selling those pans where you pan for gold. That's where the they real money are. is. Yeah. Right. I mean, it seems that, you know, that's I mean, I don't think the market is big enough for them to make a lot of money from that. Sure. But a little bit of money because right. there's people like me out there. Yeah. And, and so you you have purchased uh, tools. Yes. Has your yes. father-in-law purchased tools? Uh, yes, though most of our tools – and uh, yeah, let's get into the tools. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, the biggest – so the the most important tool you'll need is a trowel okay. or or better yet, uh, several trowels. So trowels is uh, – those they're kind of like triangular metal things with a handle – uh, I've seen them in, uh, I don't know, movies or cartoons, people using them to put cement on bricks right. when building a house. Are they, are they the scoop ones that you use for gardening or the flat ones you use for the, cement? Okay. The flat ones you use for cement. Okay. Right. And we have a pair of pretty big ones and a pair of pretty small ones. Uh, I went to the beach once in Santa Monica and ran into a woman who made a, a, a really big lion, beautiful lion sculpture. 
Okay. And you know, I had I have a tool belt. Uh huh. Uh, with you know, with my which is a pencil pencil case essentially. Okay. Uh, and a, you know, and a bucket full of tools. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh, what tools did you use? And she was like, oh, I just one trowel. You know, so a single trowel could do a lot, right? Yeah. Um, and I've never used a trowel for anything else besides sandcastles. Um, but uh, they're they're super super useful because. Uh, they have a – you can cut with them. Okay. And you need to be able to cut. And if you take two, you can cut like corners if you put them together. Um, you can cut angles uh, with them. Um, sharp uh, – essentially, you could create sharp edges okay. uh, with them, which are wow. which are really cool. So th there's a lot, a lot you could do with, with trowels. Yeah. Um, and um, then you have really the, the key thing to – Instead of a mold, oh. so kids use molds. Right. So what we use are essentially uh, buckets. So um, buckets with the top of the bucket cut out. So just a, more of a cylinder or whatever the shape of the bucket, but no bottom. Right. That's right. No okay. bottom. Right? Okay. So, uh, right. So the... Uh, the bottom, and we have uh, various shapes and sizes. Sure. Right? So, right, so we can have a round, like, you know, Home Depot, right, is where I get all this stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. I got the, the, the five gallon bucket that's round, and the 10 gallon bucket that's round, and the 10 gallon back bucket that's rectangle, and the 15 gallon back bucket. Uh, I've seen on South Padre Island, uh, people use like actual trash, you know, like legit. Oh, like full like, on full giant. On. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, that they have to use, uh, I think, little carts, not not your regular beach carts, but little motorized vehicles, I think, to bring to the shore <laughs> or or something. I mean, you know, to make something enormous. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, but but that's but part of the problem, you can't just do that. You, you got to use then vegetable oil to slick up the inside of these things. OK, uh, wait a minute. So you're bringing <laughs> Okay, vegetable oil. I got vegetable oil. I got a spray can, a spray bottle of vegetable oil. Okay, makes sense. Right. Otherwise, uh, if you just let's say you just so what you do with these things is right. You you put them down with the the narrow side up mm -hmm. that and that part is cut, and you uh, essentially um, what you end up is you end up creating a foundation below that, okay. and the foundation below that essentially is uh, sand that's really packed and it's very wet. So it's saturated. Okay. And then on top on top of that you put like the, the bucket and you kind of uh put sand over the ledges so water can't leak and you start pouring water in there uh until it just starts filling up with water. Um and then you pour uh essentially you put shovels of you take the shovel and put sand in there. So first you fill it up with it water up. and then you add the sand. Right. Okay, right. so it's super super wet. Okay. Right, right. So that's the idea, and and the nice thing about it is mostly if it has already have water in it, uh, the water just takes your sand and gets it wet and uh, disperses it evenly. Okay. Right? Yeah, so yeah. So you don't have like clumps and everything is everything is wet. Um, <coughs> um, once you have that done, you essentially uh, can you dig out the edges at the bottom and then you've got to lift it. And this is where the grease comes in without the vegetable oil. I mean, this is incredibly heavy sand. Okay. Right? Cause you've soaked so, it to death and then you've packed it super dense. Right. And if it's, if it's attached to the sides of the, which is, of the bucket, which is why you sprayed it before yes. you did the water. Okay. And then it just slides right off. Okay. Really nice. And then you've got a really dense, a uh, beautiful bunch of sand in a kind of in a beautiful either uh, circle or uh, trapezoid or, um, or any any right. shape, right? Yeah, yeah. I have a nice octagonal okay. uh, one that, nice. that that's that's pretty cool. Um, and now you can work with it, All right? So now you and and that's how you get your like big buildings, right? Okay, so yeah, the main structure are those ones. Right, right, right. And just one, and or do you do like several to sort of build on top of? It all depends on 
how, how much time and energy you have. <laughs> and one of the, for me, one of the toughest things about sandcastling to decide is do I do details or do I do more structures? Okay. Right? Yeah. Because I like details, but I could take like three, four hours on one building and then you never get anything else. Right. Are you making uh, Petra? Or are you making, you know, like Dubai, right? It's, mm. uh, you know, are you going for height and, and, and breadth? Or are you going for like little scrolly kind of, you know, Indiana right. Jones? I should make Petra. <laughs> you know, I've, I've been actually, you know, I actually wear, uh, if, if have those you of you watching the Petra? video. I have. And in fact, this thing that I wear on my neck uh, is an Athenian owl that I got in Petra oh. uh, from a caveman. And I like saying caveman because in Petra, essentially, uh, people lived there in the caves in right. Jordan uh, yep. until the 1970s when they made a national park. Uh, and then they moved all the people to this uh, little town right outside Petra. But they still allowed them to sell stuff. And I bought this from a, from a dude who was born in a cave in, in Petra. That's awesome because yeah. I want to yeah. go to, into the cave in Petra. Uh, that it's is pretty cool. It's one of the coolest mm -hmm. things that I've yeah. – okay. Anyway, go ahead. But yeah, you can make <laughs> Petra. You can, right? So, you know, and there's lots of things that you can – If it depends on what you want to do. And notice we're talking about sand castle. Why castle, right? Petra is not a castle. Nope. Right? Petra, you know, people lived in Petra, right? It has this impressive statues in the, you know, in the beginning. You can make Luxor, I guess, mm -hmm. right? In the same kind of vein. Uh, or you can make, uh, you know, uh, my uh, father in law every once in a while makes an Aztec style pyramid. Okay. Right? Oh, he likes the step pyramids? Ad yeah, another with the steps, pyramid right? that I would also enjoy seeing. Yes. I have seen no pyramids. Right. It is the great regret. Anyway, continue. Mm. Uh, go. Um, I, I have uh, in the Pyramid of Gaza uh, when I was 21. Uh, You've seen I, pyramids too. God, yes. I, I, I'm even talking to Shlomo says, Share, by the way. Everybody <laughs> should uh, go to <laughs> ethicsandvideogames.com and uh, Video Game Ethics on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you very much. Continue. Thank you. Um, so I, when I went, I was 21 and they had rules uh, posted on the, you know, when you go into the uh, – Pyramid of Giza. Yeah. Uh, you can go down where the sarcophaguses Sarcophaguses uh, are? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, right. Used to be. And they have like signs that say, don't go in there. And of course, being 21, I went in there. Of so my, my friend could take a picture. Yes. Uh, this was like in 1994. Uh, and um, I, I, I got uh, mugged uh, uh, later on on that trip. And I lost all my photos, including the photo of me, like, lying in the Pyramid of Giza, which was such a cool photo to have. Oh, my God. What yeah. assholes we were. You know that yeah. we climbed over the fence at the Oracle at Delphi? Oh. Uh, in, the, in the night. And we're on the altar and had uh, a bottle of wine. And I was like, hey, jackass. Uh, there's a reason that says no. Anyway, because if everybody did it, there would no longer be any ruins. It would be completely trashed. Anyway, so, uh, yes. But it's so cool. It was really cool. It was yes. very cool. And it was the Canadian <laughs> guy when we were standing on the altar and the Mexican woman that I was traveling with um, was going to move a rock so she could plop, prop a candle, candle up. And the Canadian oh. guy, we were with a Canadian guy and a South African guy. And the Canadian guy goes, hey, it's not a construction site. Don't move any of the rocks. And uh, so, and, and it says, get off the altar. So we got off the altar. Right. So Canadian guy, <laughs> voice of reason again. Anyway, so uh, castles okay. versus Petra. Uh, castles. Right, right. So uh, when Obama won the election, mm -hmm. uh, being a family from Chicago, they went to the beach in Chicago with uh, some family friends and their kids and built the White House. Oh, right. cool. And that was a really – I was really impressed. I thought it was a really well-done White House. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you can do stuff like that. Some people build traditional sandcastles, mm -hmm. every you know, medieval that you could imagine. Some people do your sculptures that you, – you know, the mermaids, the lions, yeah. you know, whatever you know, whatever it is that – trucks I've seen. Oh, trains. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right? You could, yeah, you could build anything I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. You just need a big pile. Right. You, you, that's, you know, uh, the woman that I talked to uh, that made the line, she said, I spent an hour and a half making a pile. Okay. All you need is to take a shovel and use that shovel for an hour and a half. <laughs> you know. And just do a lot of digging and then and, and then 
you, you're creating a big pile, oh. a big pile, and you're getting it all wet. So okay. a big pile, and you're getting it all, and that's the key, getting it all wet. So it's a lot of trips. It's hard on your body to do, you know, to to do all that. Right, right? physically, it is. I'm sure it's like any shoveling. I mean, essentially, right. you're shoveling sand, uh, which right. is uh, one of the jokes of the worst job in the world is to shovel sand for a living. But you're like, no, no, I'm doing it because I want to make a castle or a building or a train set. Because I have actually yeah. on Venice Beach seen people make like the Sphinx. And then right. they'll put like a hat out and you're like, cool Sphinx, here's a quarter or here's a dollar. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So those are the like the real classic, right? And yeah. they're, and they're doing it specifically so it'll be something you recognize. But then you have people who are just going out there. I've it seems that every time I've gone out with a plan, sometimes I try to draw out what I'm gonna do. Okay. Yeah. All right. I have I have ideas. Sure. Right. I wanna try out my ideas. I I've never done this. Let's try this. And like 90% of what I plan to do goes out the window the minute like I, you know, start right. making the first building and kind of end up going with the flow. And I guess we'll do something else. And something new always happens anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. It's the best laid plans. And um, I wonder if there are mm. architecture or, or, or architects who do it, who literally like plan stuff like that. Ah, that would that would be cool. Yeah, I mean, or you know, or people who's uh, just like architecture, right. like you know, hobbyists. Yeah, right, hobbyists that are that think in terms of arch. I don't know enough architecture to kind of think in those terms, but my uh, my father in law does. Right, like right? he does. He is he kind of a draftsman where he kind of draws it out and. No, no, he's he he's, he it, it, the experience is totally different for him. He doesn't even. Uh, well, you know, let, let me get through the tools first. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then, Let's get and back let me to get the to tools. It. Yeah. So, okay. So, so, we, so shovel, obviously, big shovel. Big shovel. Right. A lot of stuff. Uh, most of the tools we use are, uh, beside the buckets and the trowels, are sculpture tools. Okay. You know, the kind that you would use for sculpting clay or other kinds of sculpture. Huh. Right? Because most of what you're, once you've got your big pile ready, you're sculpting. I mean, that's really kind of what you're doing for, for most of it. Okay. Right? Um, and, and, you know, people could just get those online for just sculpting tools. Okay. Right? And okay. That's, that's all that. Just and then chisels you just get... and, and, and different oh, no. cutting? N n not for sculpting, let's say, stone. Okay. Right? But more like for sculpting clay. Okay. What, are, what do those look yeah. like? What are those? Uh, the best ones are – so typically there are things like, let's say, my cut, but the best things are like uh, loops of steel. Different kinds of loops of steel that essentially take away uh, strips of sand or strips of clay. Uh, so uh, let's say I have a column maker that's kind of like uh, it's it, it's a little a little stick, and on it it has almost like a U shape thing uh, where each part of the U is kind of like it's and it's thin steel, and each one of of the U's cuts like a column in the sand and if you drag it down you get columns okay and, what right? uh, yeah and oh wait it's wait a minute let me share this yeah. and tell me if this is what i'm looking at uh, and uh is it like that item yep it's ex uh so i i have uh i have a bunch of these um in fact, uh, the one where your uh, cursor is on, yeah, uh, the the one two to the right of it is uh, oh sorry the the other one the other right my right okay M two more go this go no. this way or that way there we go the the other way <laughs> not that way the other way okay more more to your left my right that's the other way. That's, oh, that's what I've got. Okay. okay it's okay. A any which way, the, uh, you know, is, is, is one of my favorites. Yes. Right. Uh, so, yeah, you, you can see here, right, how essentially you've got – you're taking little bits of, of sand off. They're and tiny. The, the, they can be. So you want different sizes for different things. Yeah. Right. The tiny ones really allow you to do details. Right. Right. And details are, are great. I mean, this is another one of the things that really make a big difference between doing a kid's sandcastle and, you know, like uh, something complicated. Right? right. You can have a lot of details, right? So you can have details that allow you to, to do windows uh, in complex ways. Okay. Right. 
uh, that allow you to to do, uh, let's say, uh, you know, uh, crenellations. Crenellations are going to be those things on the towers that we talked about where you have the gaps. Okay. Oh, uh, like right? where, the, where the people would shoot uh, the arrows through? Right. Okay. Where the people would shoot the arrows through. <laughs> right? uh, that has a real word. Anyway, but yes. Uh, so you can could, you could make those and, and you're – carving out the whole piece right you're not just doing a a, a drawing in this in the you're doing both obviously for, for, it depends on what right yeah. so let's say windows i can I essentially i end up drawing the windows yeah. because that's too fine but the crenellations right i can cut the crenellations out yeah right uh and like windows in general i can cut a window out with something that is a uh, you know that has a loop yep and the nice thing about the loop is it goes right through yeah. and the sand kind of exits as opposed to a scoop yeah. where, right, you're going to meet resistance eventually right. because you're maintaining it in the scoop. The loop is, is hollow so you can actually get in deeper. Is that the ideal? And okay. You, yes, and you can get in deeper. That's another one, and which is especially important if you're uh, – Let's say, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing a castle and I want a gate to my castle. I want the, my gate to go through the castle, of course. Yeah. Right? Um, and so it, it's so much easier with a loop yeah. than, let's say, something that's solid to, to do that. So do right. you, have you made like sort of a tunnel through a castle? Have you done? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the norm. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the norm. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We almost almost always do that. Uh, sometimes uh, in our last, uh, in, our, <laughs> in our San Diego trip, uh, my stepfather, we had a round one. Yep. And he managed to create... Uh, eight tunnels through it that all that essentially all connected we, together in the middle in an empty space. So we we took out space from the top to create uh, sort of a garden. Uh, to create, yeah, kind of what you would imagine to be a garden, except uh, where you would have vines on it, but we don't have we didn't have vines right. to put on it, right? But where it's hollow and you have uh, holes from eight different sides that connect with the hollowness. That was extremely. He was very proud of it. It was very. It would very collapse. Cool. Why does? I mean, without collapsing, he's created eight tunnels and then a hole coming down from the center where the magical well would be, and uh, sure. yeah, yeah, and then and they all and it didn't collapse. Right. They all they all meet. So they're not just tunnels underground, right? I mean, they're right. like they're the entire thing uh, for most of the height is is a window or whatever it would be. Right. Right. So, so you could do a lot if you've got the fine, the finer tools to do it. So, right? is it is it the problem getting with those tools, trying to get the sand out without knocking anything over? Yes, and and <sighs> it's and there there's another tool that's really great, which is specifically made for sandcastling, which I did buy from from one of the sandcastling people. That's kind of like a, a a thin piece of metal that's flat. That's maybe about five inches okay uh that's that's very very flat and has sharp sides and you hold it with a with a handle mm -hmm. uh and you can cut with it but you could also pull dirt with it oh uh, all right so you can get dirt out uh it's incredibly useful for lots and lots of other of, of things it's it's super fine it has edges it's it's just uh did you get you one for your so father-in-law I did actually. That's a I very I that's did. an excellent yes. gift. That's an excellent yes. gift for a, a guy <laughs> like him. So this this is fascinating. Wow. Uh, and then you got things like uh, how do you when you have a castle wall? How do you do those wall? How do you do the stones? Yeah. And a mechanical pencil is essentially kind of you know a mm. mechanical pencil, and you're just drawing the stones, and then you get a straw, and you just a straw is another really. I, I use a bamboo straw. Okay. Because uh, they don't get messed up. Yeah. Um. But, you know, uh, then you can blow away the sand and you get the fine lines for, like, the stones. Okay. Uh, so you're just like drawing that. in the, the design of the brick or the stone. Right. And then you're blowing on it with a, with a straw to, to, to get rid of the excess sand so it has that texture. Right, right. And huh. my 70-year-old my son can do that. Sure. Right, so, so this is something that right, I could pass on to my – and it looks beautiful Yeah. Right, if it's done this way. Of course. Uh, and then we have uh, one thing that we used to have that we, we have uh, what we call the Terminator, which is, a, you know, one of those square ice cream scoops? Yep. Mm -hmm. you know, that, the one that like Thrifty used to have? Yeah. Uh, right? 
Um, they're great. They're just, I think they cost like 70 bucks or something because, you know, how many people buy that kind of stuff? Right, right. It's weird. Yeah. But you can essentially use that, you know, in a bucket with mud in it to Mm -hmm. essentially do square pieces, right? You can use that for crenellations. Right, for those turret things. things. Yeah, to put those, yeah. Um, and then, uh, we have a piece of wood. Okay. Uh, and we use that for stairs typically. Um, a piece of wood essentially is just a simple piece of wood, even like a, a little one. I have one that's a, that's that's two by six inches, and another one that's uh, has a handle on it that's maybe uh, a foot by five inches. Wait, that helps um, you carve out the stairs, or you create it you, as stairs? You, you press the, wood. the sand down with the oh, wood. Oh, okay. A little bit at a time to get stairs. Okay. And, and that's another thing that kids can do. Oh, right, right, is, right, right. Make it's, the stairs. It's an, yeah, it's an easy one for, for kids to do. It's a really easy one to kind of pick up. And once they're done with it, you can use the trowels to carve out the edges of the stairs. Right. So, so now you have this beautiful uh, staircase that essentially, uh, I don't want to say it's hanging, but it's, you know, it's on its own. It's separate. It's not... Uh, it's not just a bunch of sand around it with stairs. Right. right? It's, have you ever tried to make a spiral staircase? Um, that would be very difficult, I think. You can have it go around the castle, let's say. Yeah. Right. That'd Which be is neat. Not, yeah, it's not that hard, especially okay. if, you first, if you first make it and then you cut the castle around it. Okay. That makes right? sense, actually, if it's the first thing you do because then you can, you, you can plan it. Okay. Right. So, so, so you've got your mound and let's say you've got your castle and you've got a gate and you want like, uh, you, you want this to go around the, the hill that you're doing to right. the things at the bottom, right? Then you can do the stairs and then you can carve out the ledge and then it looks like the stairs is, are on the ledge, yes. right? like in a mountain kind of, kind of thing. And, and that's, that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then there's the only other thing I think we use is glue sometimes. Oh, really? Um, like Elmer's? Like just normal glue? Yes, glue? like Elmer's glue. So we we always forget about it. But, uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, having been – I've only been in one sandcastle contest ever. What? And there's contests. There's contests. Of course you know, there's we've contests. Ne- never been to one in California, but we went to one in Asbury Park in New Jersey. Okay. Um, we just happened to – be there on vacation when they happen to have the sandcastle contest there. So we we entered. We made it to the we made it to the local paper as the picture for the sandcastle. Ooh, we had a, we had a great castle, but we lost out to uh, people who did more like sand sculptures. Okay, send right. me that picture of the of that sandcastle that was in the paper if you if you have it. I, would, I don't even know if if we have it anymore. Oh my gosh. I wonder if we have it. Yeah, it yeah. seems like a family treasure. We should have it yes, s- you somewhere. Yes, definitely have it as a right. family treasure. Um, Frame but, it. But uh, you know, but at the time, I was like, "How are these people doing these sandcastles that never seem to fall apart?" <gasps> right. And I was told <laughs> that they have glue. spray bottles where they take oh, some spray. glue and they mix it up with water, okay. so they dilute it some, and then they can and then they spray it on their castles, and the glue <laughs> keeps the sand together. It's the old spitball that's what we're talking about that's the old baseball trick and then all right. of a sudden it's a curveball i get it mm-hmm. a little stickiness uh, uh, slider mm-hmm. is, is that sure. what those were curve right, it's like slider. sliders and right. you could get like a yep i learned that on a previous um, episode of the dork forest anyway right. so uh, <laughs> you must learn a lot through this thing i do and i retain <laughs> only a little of it as we go along but i do retain something from everybody so well if, yeah. if we ever have you and andy out uh, to build a sandcastle with us we'll we'll see how you We're, know we'll, we'll, we'll we'll see if we can apply this I, i'm not particularly yeah. beach people either but uh mm. I'll, I'll come and eventually find a coffee shop so that'll be great um, all right <laughs> that's outstanding. I'm talking to Shlomo Share, by the way, and he has a podcast called uh, Vid- Ethics and Video Games, and it's ethicsandvideogames.com and Video Game Ethics at Video Game Ethics on Twitter and Instagram. And he does that podcast with uh, my loved one, Andy Ashcraft. Thank you very much. Let's get back into it. So the glue, uh, that f- it feels like cheating. Is there any kind of rules or no? We've never used glue, though I've wanted to. We just forget about it. Yeah. I mean, you know, it makes your structure stay. Right. Right. 
Is it? Can uh, it beat the tide? I don't think so. It cannot beat the. Nothing can beat the tide. <laughs> and this is this is part of the art of sandcastling to deal with the tide. Right, because um, eventually it will get washed away. Right. Yeah, it's a special kind. It's it's special because of that in some way. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, so so what we do essentially, now that we got all this thing, right, we got all our tools, uh, we, we built the foundation, we got our big structure, and now essentially we work top to bottom. Okay. Right? So, right, you can't do the bottom before you do the top because okay. then when you do the top, it's going to mess up the bottom. That's right. It's like when you right? clean, you clean from the top, bottom, you do the floors last. Uh, right. Nancy Otherwise, Cation. everything will fall down to the floor. Right. To, then, to you, the floor. then you have to clean the floor yeah. again. So right. um, top and down, what do you do? And center to outward. Right? Center to uh, outward. Okay. Right. Otherwise, you know, we start – and this is a, a lot of times a, a challenge with – because kids might want to do one thing outside your castle, but your castle needs to spread out. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Because you built a big castle, but, okay, what's going to come next? And the castle is also – at the top because you built it higher because you make a foundation to build it higher. And then you can go down from it and down you could have, you know, let's say other steps or maybe other smaller buildings, mm-hmm. uh, you sure. know, they might connect to or a pool or gardens of various kinds. Or, you got to have a or, village that you know, supports the castle. Um, where yeah. are the peasants going to live? Exactly. Right? There are uh, serfs. Right. Yes. Right. Uh, right. Um, and eventually, and I really like, uh, mon- mandala type things, you know, to, to do. So sometimes we might have a castle and then my wife is really good at making, uh, faces in like sand sculpture faces. Okay. That's uh, neat. S- so we might have like, the, there's a castle, but then around it, there's a whole thing like a mandala with, with different kinds of faces in them and different kinds of carvings that, that go into that area. Okay. Um, that's uh, neat. Yeah, and and you know, and there, and you're gonna have arches connecting the different buildings, and terraces, and bridges, and moats, and buttresses, which are uh, essentially going to be helping to hold up the castle. Okay. Right? So that and, it's sort of a it's at a it's at an angle, right? Right. Buttresses, right, yeah. Right. And flying buttresses, which means you got a hole in them. Okay. So that's you fun. can have like a, a road through them. So we, we often have those. And, and again, you can have them in multiple levels. And when you get multiple levels, because this is the thing about sand, right? You could just keep cutting away at the sand. Yep. Right? You could just keep digging deeper and you've got lots of uh, potential. Sure. Sure. Mm-hmm. What are some of the fav- your favorite ones that you've done? I mean, of, everyone uh, has a phone now, so they can take a picture of of their favorite castles. But do you guys, or do you just you know, sort of let it be, man? Uh, most, you know, I I feel like I I did one early on that was kind of based on what I think is called the Great, either the Great Zimbabwe or the Great Timbuktu. Okay, which is kind of like an African style building with lots of holes. I think it's Timbuktu from Mali. Okay, uh, I I just saw pictures of it at some point which is kind of like square buildings with a lot of holes get poked in them and i thought that was that was really cool okay but um i i feel like i tend i like patterns i like just putting a lot of lot of patterns in my castle i i'm not as much into castle elements uh you know like we'll i'll have windows you know i'll have columns i'll have the gate you know i'll have it i have it all carved out nice this thing yeah, something like that. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. That's kind of neat. Except, except instead of those things sticking out, I made them with holes. Oh, okay. Yeah, instead the, of yeah, outies, the, you went with innies. Yeah, innies. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Right. Uh, I and sometimes things that look a little uh, as techy. Okay. Uh, I, yeah. I, I guess you know that 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 I've done, but, um, you know, it it, it seems to be a little different every time. Right. Right. And, right. Uh, yeah. And it's all. And then you've got the decorations of whatever you got around. Okay. So you right. built the structure from the center out right. as high, or if there's a hole, and then and then there's decorating. Uh. Yeah. If there's if it's around. Right. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, undervalued in sand castles uh, because you know it's yet another thing. So seashells, right. flags, seaweed. Okay. Little people. You know, little people would be fun if I had some. Sure, sure. Um, you know, uh, if something uh, breaks, which it almost yeah. always does, really? because we try to we try to push. You know, you try yeah. to push it, and eventually things break. Yeah, uh, you can turn it into a ruin, 
uh, oh, especially nice. right. So it's like an old ruined castle, and decorations are really great there, okay. especially there, right? Yeah. Um, and then you've got the kids, right? Yeah. So every you know, anytime you build a sandcastle at the beach, there's always kids that come around and look at the sandcastle and want to know if they could help with the sandcastle. Yeah. And it's also a really nice thing to do with you know community to do with man. kids. Yeah. Yeah. It, and, right? and it's a great way to. I bet you it's a great way to meet other families that are out in the other people that are out at the beach. Just going, what on earth are you doing? This is so awesome. It, it is though. It, I feel weird about it. I, you know, I. Do you put nice. the kids it's, to work though? Do you ever put the other the strangers to work? I sometimes. <laughs> or is I'm, it yours? Uh, I'm. S- some things I'm just scared, right? I mean, you're scared. I'm, you know, I mean, I think of what my son can do. Okay. And, you know, I'm, I, my favorite thing right now is to give my son his own castle to work on. Oh, next you're, to yeah, my castle. It's your castle. Right? That's right. You're like, right? please don't break my castle. I'm scared yeah. you're going to break my castle. Fair I'm, enough. Yeah, Fair enough. I'm working on this for like three, <laughs> four, five hours. Right, <laughs> right. Right. This is a real pro. So, right. No, I, I respect that you want to help. Uh, I got to put you to work over here. Let me get you started. Right. So you get your right. son started at a, at a castle that then you can join. Right. Yeah. And we can join it. So it's still cool. And it's still and the kids can do a lot. Right? So yeah. seawalls are always important. What if the tide's coming? We need a seawall, and seawalls can just look cool. Yeah, yeah. Right? And right. and it, do you let them? Do do you as as bait? Do you or as bribery? Do you let them kind of use a tool? Yeah, yeah. You're just yeah. like go build the seawall so that we can protect it a little bit longer from the sea, and then get to build a nice big wall. And then you're like, now here's here's some stuff you can. That's kind of that's cool too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, if they build a seawall, now we can. You know, we can draw on that seawall with that mechanical pencil, right? right? To to give to give it stones. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can use the trowel to cut it so it looks really nice and yep. straight, mm-hmm. right? Uh, we can uh, on the other side of the of the seawall, we could build a moat for the castle that the kids are really great at. Yep. Uh, tunnels are always fun. Super fun right? as long as the all... the wall is strong enough. And right. Yeah. Right. Uh, or we can make, let's say we got a castle. There's a road leading out of the castle and it's always fun to have tunnels go under the road. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, there's a dungeon that could be made. I still don't know what a dungeon exactly is, but it could be whatever the kid wants it to be. Sure. Sure. Okay. It's uh, usually just a basement where bad things happen. That's the definition of a dungeon. Shlomo. Sure. Uh, <laughs> a basement where bad things happen. Yeah. Yes. Cause uh, nobody's, it's not, it's not a, it's not an extra room where you put the foosball table. That's a finished no. basement. Uh, a dungeon is an unfinished basement, which usually has chains on the wall. And then someone usually has died there. Uh, there's, we're, well, we're this the bad is, guys. This is, yeah. Yeah, we're in LA, so there's uh, I guess almost no basements. Almost so no basements. Yeah. If if it if it only was if it wasn't for these damn earthquakes, we could get ourselves some good dungeons. There would be dungeons, right? there would be cellars. Yeah. Um yeah. talk to me about this sculpt we have about ten minutes left. Talk to me yeah. about the sculptures. Well, you know, the sculptures could be kind of anything, right? People can make uh do I, I've seen really nice like Modern looking, uh, uh, almost like modern homes that are really geometrical. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But but they're doing kind of geometrical sculptures, and I I think those are are really neat. Like a just Frank Lloyd doing... Wright building, and uh, which, um, which which are those sort of more um, glass and 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 steel kind of modern looking uh, buildings. Yeah. Um. I I guess I'm thinking about buildings with like sharp angles. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's yeah, say that's, right. That's Where, it. Right. Uh, where, you know, with Frank Lloyd Wright, I think he gets into, right, it really goes along with the surroundings. And, he does like to, yes, right. I, my apologies, yes. But right. uh, what I was wondering, though, is anyone mm. taking, like, a tube of right. of of, uh, of sand and making, like, outside of your awesome structure, tiny, uh-huh. tiny sculptures, like taking their little tiny mm. tool and making, like, the Venus de Milo or like that. You know, my my wife kind of does that, but not 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 that fine yeah. because it's easier actually to – for those kinds of things, it's easier to just make drip sculptures. What's that? So, 
So you get your bucket with some sand and you get a bunch of sand in your hand and it's wet and it's dripping. Yep. And you can essentially, and I usually shake my hand a little bit mm -hmm. uh, because that like gets the splatter effect, mm -hmm. right? And you can create like trees. Trees is the easiest thing that sure. we normally do. Sure. Right? So you can make a bunch. So let's say we have a road and there's a bunch of trees lining that road. Oh, that's awesome. Leading up, leading up to the castle. Or I like the castle normally as a topper of some kind. Okay. And I like using drips at the at the top to kind of do additional interesting design things. But so so drip is another kind of those things where you could do things that look like statues. Right. And then it's but besides that, my wife uh who's a much better artist than me, uh can, you know, she like more like puts things together like We'll make a mound and we'll carve faces into it. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. She's doing the yeah. she's doing the 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 relief, like more of a, a something in, like a, a a face in relief in the mound. Yeah. 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 Cool. Or right. I mean, yes, yeah, st stuff like that. You know, it's it's all kind of experimentation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's all kind of experimentation at this point. Yeah. Um. And um. It really kind of depends what. People want, you know, I, I have it in my mind at some point to go like with a bunch of like, you know, pieces of wood that are kind of long and thin and would allow you to do things that you couldn't otherwise do with the regular physics of sand. Okay. Right. Because they're being held by wood, by a wood plank in some way. Right, right. Oh, and right. sort of pack the sand around the wood. On the wood. On so the wood, yeah. Let's say, so, so you have like the sand jutting out over the air yep. and it looks like it's just how is that happening but it's being held by 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 wood right right i because right. i wonder about right. other structures like i've never also had someone who builds cards card houses you know uh -huh. when, when right. you put playing cards together and then um i remember we used to do that i don't know if that's still anything anyone's i mean someone must be doing that i bet you there's oh, a yeah. youtube channel that rabbit hole that that's happening Every once in a while, I see someone on Reddit live uh, doing that. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, well, so. Um, in I guess, summation, you know, Shlomo, talk to me. In, in summation. Well, okay. So let's, you know, part of it is kind of, uh, it, it's it, one of the weird things I think about building sandcastles is that, you know, every once in a while, like we get together and as a family and we might like build you know, with my son, like a Lego structure or, you know, or something like that. Right. But the the, the thing about the sandcastle, it's, it's weird is that you build it and you know, it's going to, you know, you know, it's going to fall apart. Right. Right. right? Yeah. And uh, when my, you buy my... a Lego model, you know that you can keep it and you can take it apart and put it back together and take it apart, and put it back together or just right. glue it together and have it forever. You know, Millennium Falcon yeah. style. Yeah. Right. Right. And you can you could. Put it on the shelf, yeah. right? You can, right? Um, with nothing else I've ever built, you just kind of know that it's going to disappear. Right. That this is, that this is faded. You know, it's a, uh, um, my uh, my stepfather, uh, my my father-in-law thinks that this is essentially. He calls it beauty and fun without purpose. Okay. All right. Because uh, you're not right. You're supposed to purely delight. He's a he's a theorist. You're purely delighting in the presence. Um. And the way he likes to do it, which is he mostly while he's carving, he's playing with the shadows because for him, a lot of this has to do with where's the sun at? What kind of shadows are you getting? And he's carving into the shadows to essentially play around with the shadows. Wow. Right? Yeah. And I, for me, I was like, wait a minute, but the sun's going to move. Yeah. And then you're going to get different shadows. Mm -hmm. Are you planning for that? And he's like, no, no, no. This is an art of the present. That like, is an excellent wait. lesson. <laughs> it, it, it's interesting. Yeah. Though for me, I'm like, but I want a building that makes sense and is complete. Right. You want a full right. building. I want yep. a full or four, you know, mm -hmm. um, but I really admire this ability to be like, I'm just going to play with a shadow. But I think you. I admire all of you for, for doing this thing that is so finite, you know, that is so, well, it is, you live in the moment. You have a really good time for four to six to 10 hours. And then you go to bed, you go to dinner, you come back the next day and it's probably, there's just a ruin or it's gone. Right. Almost always it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's yeah, I mean it's a few hours later it's gone, and then it's 
you know, and we never gone, I think, 10 hours. I think we did do six hours. Yeah. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, the minute you leave, you're like, OK, what are the kids that pass by going to do to it? Oh, right. 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 And there's yeah. the there's the people and people ruin uh, all things. Uh, but there's just the wind and right. there's the water and there and it will and the sun will will will, will dry it out and it'll crumble easier. Will, yeah, the sun will dry it out. The wind will come. The water is rising. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and eventually and, you know, there's been times where I just kind of sit down and watch it get eaten oh, by, really? by, the, by the sea. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, just accepting that you made something that you put like hours of effort into is just going to be gone. Is itself an interesting part of the, of, of the experience? That's so beautiful. Yeah. I have, as per usual, I like to bring it down to earth by asking two questions. Uh, three, actually, what, uh, what are your favorite, uh, beaches here in Los Angeles that you like to do this at? Um, Definitely, we found of all the beaches we've gone to, uh, Venice Beach, okay. uh, just just south of Wa of the Washington Pier. Okay, um, is we've has been by far the best, and it's amazing. Like a mile uh, north of that in Santa Monica, uh, where we normally go, where my sister lives, uh, the sand is incredibly different. Oh, right? that's fascinating. So, Second question: yeah. uh, Where is the parking? Okay. How's the parking? Uh, it's just paid parking, over, $10, 20 yeah, bucks, something like they, that. They keep raising it. It's now 16 bucks. Uh, <sighs> there's some parking in the street around, but not not a whole lot. But at least the parking is very close to the beach. It does make it very easy to go to the beach. Right, because you got to haul stuff. Uh, that's my a wagon. You need a wagon. Oh, you need a wagon. Okay, last a question. A wagon can really help. Yeah. Do, you, do, do you have a portable umbrella? Do you have any kind of shade that you create for, you know, for, the, for the taking a break? Um, I don't take a break. All right. You don't take a break. Oh, but sorry. Others might. Me, uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> you we have an umbrella. Uh, you do. We, we, we just never, we just never bring it because when, when we take a break, we go boogie boarding. Okay. Oh, you just you go know? in the, you just go in the water. Yeah. And then we're back at Sandcastle. All right. Fair enough. Right. <laughs> oh my God. Shlomo, this has been so great. It has been an hour and, uh, I cannot tell you. How much I've enjoyed this hour of conversation. Thank you so much Likewise. for doing the Dork Forest, man. Thanks uh, for having me. Everyone, you can get in on the ground floor. It comes out on Tuesday, same day the Dork Forest does. There are only 15 episodes in, so you could get in and listen to the first 15 hours. for sh for. It's about an hour. Is that how long the show is? Uh, an hour, a little bit less than that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, and, um, uh, and if you go to... Uh, ethics and video games.com and you could follow them on Twitter and Instagram at video games and ethics. Thank you. Shlomo share for doing the show. All right. Thanks Jackie. And what I always say to the Rangers, take care of each other out there. Remember my hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat, <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?